Thank you, um, Alex, <coughs> for your introduction and uh, your help with the title of this talk when we were sat scratching our heads over a cup of coffee well, well what seems a rather long time ago now, but um, there we go, we're all here and uh, I trust everybody is ready to go. So a little bit about me, as Alex said, I'm a final year competing student at Bournemouth uh, University um, and I wanted to talk today really about the role that not necessarily what we would call classically assistive technologies, although there'll be, there'll be some of that in there I suppose, but not just those, but the technologies that you, know, you guys use, on a, we all use in a day, on a day-to-day -day basis and how in fact these technologies have assistive quality. So if we're ready to go, uh, Oh, and this was a nice quote that I found. Um, you, you know, if technology is done right, it can help an awful lot of people. And you know, if technology is done badly, it can disadvantage an awful lot of people. Um, so if we get technology right, then yeah. So the first piece of um, technology I picked out to talk about today, some of you might think is a little bit odd for me to choose this as my first, you know, big opening piece that I want to talk about. But in fact, um, being able to be financially independent is probably the key, the key to, the key to start you on that road of an independent life. Now, when I was at school many, many years ago, they said you need to learn to write or at least sign your name because you, you need to be able to write a check, for example. Now, who in this room has written a check in the last six months? <laughs> 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 um, so, some of you have, some of you haven't, but my, my point is to understand is check, check is a technology is dying, and the way, the way we transact financially is changing. And for me, that has huge benefit. Um, gone, of, gone of the days, you know, where I'd have to make sure I was perfectly sidled up to the reader, and make sure I got the card for me stuck in uh, next to the glare of the shop assistant getting rather frustrated, get the, get the pin number exactly right, while you've got queues of people piling behind you, you know, with their groceries or what have you. And, and it just creates a more convenient experience to on a personal level. It means that I have a complete control of my phone. So it's a complete way to an analyze and manage that. And also on a personal level, an easier way to transact with friends and family because cash is fiddly, especially the new plastic ones, but I think we can all agree on that. Um, so the next piece of technology, uh, Marmite technology, as we might call it, is social networking. <coughs> you know, it, it has got a, a, reason, a reasonably bad name in the last sort of two to three years. Oops. Um, it has got gotten itself a quite a bad name. And if we look at things like trolling and Cambridge Analytica and any any other saga you wish to choose because there are plenty at the moment. But I think it's not it's to actually sit and reflect as to how far social networking has taken up and in particular taken me. You know, it's given me that platform to be social when that's not always physically possible. It's given me that link to the outside world that, that it may not be physical, that's true. But I think for everybody's, you know, you know we, we, all need, we all need contact and community. And I think social networking has really brought that into the home and, you know, it enables us to have that more instant connection. It may not necessarily be as meaningful, true, but, but the fact we have that is a huge step forward. It's also a great place to, to look at, you know, how, how communities are formed. You know, we've got marketplaces now, so I'm able to buy and sell my things in a more, more easy way. I don't, don't necessarily have to, you know, ship them through eBay and go through all that hassle. Because um, that's not a very accessible process. And equally, um, obviously, you know, I have to have people support me through my, you know, my daily life. You know, and I'm reliant on finding those people. And as it's becoming more and more difficult 
social networking and, and being able to connect with people in that way and in that kind of instantaneous methodology yeah, yeah, has made a huge difference to that. Gone are the days where I'd have to go and place an advert in the newspaper, you know, cross my fingers and you know, leave it a few weeks and see what happens. Um, so again, just another really nice area where we've come a long way. Oh, um, a lot of people see personal assistant, you know, um, home assistant, sorry, as quite a gimmick technology. You know, if I, if I talk to my parents or people in my parents' generation and beyond, they go, why would you want a thing you can shout at? <laughs> <laughs> and it reply to you nonsensical rubbish. Um, what, 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 is, what is the point, they said. Well, uh, I, I argue um, that there is a point to these technologies. I'll give you an example from my own life. Um, you know, at night time I don't always necessarily want to go to sleep straight away. Um, but if I'm staying up, I'd rather not stay awake you know, stay awake in complete darkness. Um, but obviously, can't reach a light switch. So, what am I going to do? Because I think the poor person that, you, you know, looks after me isn't going to be very impressed if I ring them up at 2 o'clock and they go, please, can you turn my light off? Because I, I think you get back a very polite, no, thank you very much. You can leave, you can, uh, leave it on. Whereas, now I have Alexa with smart plugs, I can simply say, Alexa, turn the lamp off, and my lamp is instantly turned off without the need for help of another person. Now, do I believe smart assistants have right to replace to all aspects of, you know, personal care, if you will? No, I, I, I don't believe that at all, and I think that would be a very bad step, to be honest. Um, and I'll have a brief discussion about that shortly. But I think if we can use technology to aid that process, then it has to be a good thing, really. <coughs> um, so, I suppose I better put a bit of Python in it, as we're at a Python conference, right? That's why we're all here. Um, so, I, I struggle to type. I'm basically a one-finger typer. Uh, so you can all imagine what programming is like trying to do it with one hand. Uh, very slow, and it gets very frustrating when you discover you, after five hours of coding, you missed a semicolon. <laughs> uh, so, I, I, I do do a lot of my code still by hand. I, I believe that's the best way to do it, and the best way to get an accurate result. However, I, I also use a Python library on top of Dragon Actually Speaking, which enables me to dictate um, in various capitalization styles, it has various programming uh, blocks installed in it, so I can ask for a, for an if or an else, for example, for, and those templates will, will be available to me, which um, can be incredibly useful, particularly when you're starting to fall asleep. But I, I don't advise that you ever code when you're falling asleep, not, not a wise idea, uh, but I've done it many a time to my peril. Um, so that's a little bit about how I manage academically and professionally. Um, oh, and I had included a video just to show you how that works, but someone was braver than me to sit and record themselves programming, so um, take it away, Gail. Next cursor. Register command. Spark type out word forward. Next cursor. Register command. Spark type out word backward. Next cursor. Last vowel, oops, a mistake. Achilles two. Clear. Register command. Spark type out, line forward. Is it leaving the account? Save. Mm -hmm. Could be. No, just in there. Oh. Shows I don't know my own videos. <laughs> 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 right. So, however, 
you know, up to this point, you know, oh, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to clickers, bear with me. So, uh, as we all know, though, uh, you know, I've kind of sung technology's praises, you know, as high as I can possibly sing them at this point. But we all know that all technology is going to be abused because that's life. Um, uh, and so I really <coughs> like this quote that kind of sets that out in a more succinct way than I ever could. So, um, what have I... Oh. So, sorry, I'm rubbish with these clicker things. Um, <laughs> So I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about privacy and how I believe that the privacy burden it is discriminatory shifted onto those with disabilities. So we've talked about how um, all these technologies can make a massive uh, difference. Okay, but let's pick out Alexa, for example. Let's pick out a voice assistant. Voice assistants are constantly listening to what you say. So. You know, for me, isn't the same. for me, I have to accept that to be able to turn my light on and off, you know, Alexa has to constantly be able to listen to what I say. Now, how is that fair just to turn the light on and off? Well, somewhat, you know, it, it's a kind of benefit risk thing. But you know, if I, you know, if I'm in my private home, I should be able to have private conversations without being listened to. And equally, if we look at something like um, dictation, for example. Okay, Dragon is operated entirely on device, so that's fine. Uh, however, if we look at something like mobile uh, dictation on the phone, obviously that won't have the processing power to do all of that on device. So where do we outsource it to? The wonderful place that we all know is the cloud. But what are the security implications of that? Where is my, is my data being stored? Is it being listened to? What if I need to dictate an, an important private document? Um, where, 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 where does that leave me? I don't want to expose myself. So, I just feel that I think when we talk about privacy, yes, privacy is important to everyone. Privacy is important to every person in this room. Um, should all respect our privacy. But I don't necessarily believe that tech companies realise when they think of all these things that they're actually shifting that burden more onto the that need the technology the most. And finally, the, um, I just wanted to take some time to talk about the future, where, where I think we're going, where I think we shouldn't go, um, um, and that sort of thing. So we've seen great advancements, you know, even in the sort of last five years. A lot of what I've come to talk to you about today wouldn't wouldn't necessarily be possible. Um, so I think that's great. But we also have a long way to go if we look at areas such as self-driving cars. I'm obviously entirely dependent on people driving me to and from places. Um, you know, is that an area we can go equally? Uh, robotic assistance and personal care is an opposite to that. By that, I mean it's an area I don't believe we should go. I think there's a lot of implications to that. Uh, I, th I, th I think overall I'd summarise the future by saying this. We're, we're, oh, I'll just finish it. We're, we're, <laughs> forget the clicker, it's all going horribly wrong. Um, so, I'd summarise it by saying this. And I know it's said a lot, but we are in the grips of a revolution. I just believe we need to take a step back and see the good, and see the good, and go there. But also think, why are we doing this? Why are we making a, a, ro a robot carer, for example? Why are we doing it? And I, I don't think there's enough of that why in there at the moment. So perhaps something to think about. Uh, okay. The video, and I'll just. I'd just like to finish with this video that I think captures things really nicely. People think that having a disability is a barrier. But that's not the way I see it. You can catch up with friends. You can capture a moment with 
your family. One face, small face, focus lock. And you can start the day bright and early. You can take a trip to somewhere new. Thanks so much, you've been awesome and thanks for bearing with me. I'd like to open the floor to questions. Privacy and, and what you and I think about with, with uh, the talk this morning, the keynote uh, about trust. Is there anything you think that companies should be doing to help improve the trust to reduce that burden of privacy on yourself, but on make it more explicit from the company? I I think trust is a very important point, and I think it's something that sadly has been degraded um, over, over a very long. Yeah, I think. It's very much been a wild west, and I, and I think that that presume trust that we we've had for you know since the, the turn of you know 2010, the early days of Twitter, where we all had that perceived trust, and I and I think that is that is sadly dying. But how how do we re do you want to know how how we should reinforce it with people reinforce it for people with disabilities or people more generally? Both. Um, so people. People with um, disabilities to start with. I think I think we need, companies need to make it clearer and in better formats how how they're using people's data because privacy policies. Let's not lie, but 99% of us in this room just see one scroll all the way to the bottom and press accept. But should we be should we be putting potentially you know vulnerable disabled people that use it and and I hate to use the word vulnerable, it's a bit well overused to be honest, but it's true. Vulnerable disabled people are in that position and I think companies need to make it clearer in an easier to understand format how they're going to use that data and what, how they store it and things. Because I think, I think if they start being honest, I think, because the whole net, as a whole, I would say if they start to be honest and clearer and more transparent, then we can begin to rebuild that trust. Uh, there someone in the hand up there. I have a really practical question. Um, tell us a bit about your setup. You mentioned Drag Dragon App 3 speaking, what OS are you using, what other kind of software do you use to... Okay, so I use Dragon for dictation, as you've already pointed out. And I have... Um, I use Windows because, purely for the dictation reasons, I, I did consider a switch to uh, Linux earlier in the year, but to be honest, the dictation, op the dictation options just aren't there at the moment. Um, and Apple, again, great for accessibility as we've seen in that video, but I think they, you know, I, I think to get the right balance in between both, I think that was the way forward for me. Uh, I use two screens because I sometimes have my code window it's a bit bigger rather than on the default font. They're more, they're more on things like 14 and 16, so I need that space. Um, and I will also use a screen reader occasionally for long documents. But to be honest, I, I know that for some people screen readers are a necessity, but I think they're a long way off in terms of intonation and tone to get where we, to get, uh, to get where we need to be. To give you an example, I'm a great fan of audiobooks. 
that, 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 that sort of level of narration is where text-to-speech should get to, and I believe we will get there, but I think we're a long way off. Uh, so, go for it. Um, so you said you're uh, knocking for, on uh, robotic assistance for home. Um, is there any reason for that? I, I, I think you'll, you'll, I'm a bit of a, a softy really, but I'm a firm believer that you'll never replace that that one-on-one -on -one human interaction, and that is so important and to feel to feel cared for and dignified. I, I personally think that's a human job. I don't, I don't believe machines should necessarily go there. In my personal view, lots of people, and maybe some of you in this room, may disagree. But, um, you know, it is a purely personal view, to be honest. Uh, any other questions? Go for it. Um, so the title of your talk is about a rising tide lifting all ships. I was wondering uh, if you think that all ships are being lifted equally, or if like inequality in like capacity is increasing or decreasing. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, look, I, I, I really wish I could say that the, that the tide is equal, but to be, to be honest, if we're talking about different disabilities or even other areas outside of disability, I think. The tide is very uh, depend depends where the focus is to be as to how high the tide is lifted, and you'll go for a cycle as to which group on that tide is being lifted further. But I I I I sincerely hope we're getting to a point where that tide will be more equal. But we still have a way to go. Anybody else? There was somebody at the back. I know they had a question. Someone I had mine end up with um, uh, the person who asked before me who asked the same question, basically. Oh, then you just hate it when people do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, seriously, guys, you've been brilliant. Thanks for coming today. Uh, wish you all the best. Cool. And feel free to come and find me, and I'm not going to, you know, bite your head off. <laughs> oh, he, he really scary. He <laughs> <laughs> so not believes me. I'll, um, I'll hang around and feel free to ask me questions because I know that some people aren't a great fan of questions and things. So I'll hang around and if you've got questions or you want to say hello, I've got business cards as well if you want to keep in touch. That's cool too. Uh, but thanks again. You've been great. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.